Hello, everyone. I'm Zhao Chuang. Today, let's draw the body of Dinocaris. Only in recent years did we know the full picture of Dinocaris. It was previously thought to be a very large ornithomimosaur, which might have a small head. Now we know that its head was similar to that of Hadrosaurus, very large and long. Its neck was long and stout, forming an S-shape, a big characteristic of Dinocaris. When drawing it, we should highlight this feature. In addition, its hind limbs were not as prominent as those of most ornithomimosaurs. Relatively speaking, the hind limbs of Dinocaris might be rather short. In recent years, according to the specimens of some other animals, such as Ornithomimus, we know that their full limbs might be a pair of huge wings. When we draw it, be aware that its wings extended from its second finger to the elbow, and there were not too many feathers behind. It also had a long tail with a fan at the end. The above was its basic physical features. When drawing, we should first pay attention to the proportions of its body parts. Its tail was about the same length as its torso. If we shape its neck like this, its neck was at least half the length of its torso. Being straightened, the length of the neck was longer than half of the torso length, like this. Its pelvis was wide, and the top of its leg was here. I will talk about the other points later. Next, let's get started to draw its body. We will draw this Dinocaris standing in the water ready to fish. First determine the position of each body part in the picture. First, we assume that its head was this long, looking into the water. Its neck was S-shaped. Its back was raised high, and the rear was its tail. We look at it from the front. Let's start with its head, and draw the back of its head first. The top view of the head is, what it looks like, when looking at the head from a bird's view. In this angle, the position of its eyes looked relatively wide, so let's pinpoint its to brow bone first, and the position between the brow bones, would be probably here. The brow bones went down and became narrow near the nose. Its brow bones were in this position, and then we draw one eye here. Its eyes were small, like this, and we draw a tiny pupil. There was some loose kin under the eyes. In front of the eyes were the ant orbital fenestri, which were not big. The other eye was blocked, so we couldn't see it. In the front was its mouth. The upper part of the mouth expanded to the sides. We can draw two structures like this first, and then use thin lines to draw the bones. When alive, it had a downward beak. Here were its two nostrils near the top. Backward, we draw its mouth. At this point, since the jugal bones were curved downwards, its mouth was also curved downwards. From this angle, the front of the lower jaw was essentially covered by the upper beak. We draw from here, and the back of the lower jaw was relatively thick. Then, we draw some feathers on the head, similar to fine hairs. Now, we move to draw its neck, the back of the neck first, which was an S shape, and the fine hairs might cover the back of the neck. Draw some muscles on the side of the neck, followed by its throat, which was soft.
Then there was the underside of the neck and its chest, the lower part of which was relatively flat. Its two arms were probably connected here. We start by drawing the upper arm, the left arm and the right arm. The lines can be drawn loosely because feathers covered on top. Then there was its forearm to hands. The first finger, the second finger, and the third finger. Its three fingers were almost equal in length, making it easier to draw. There was a layer of feathers starting from the second finger, and the feathers were probably like this, all the way to the wrist. The feathers on its upper arms were not too long. Moving backward, we draw its high raised back, with the highest point probably here. Along this direction, let's draw the edges formed by some hairs. At the rear of the tail, the line went down and extended like this. Then there were the ribs. We can use fluffy strokes to show the edge of the ribs. And the edge above the pelvis. And then we move to its belly, the front of the thighs was the belly. When drawing the top half, we use the broken lines that represent the feathers to form a full line, extending downward from its chest to the knee of the thigh. We draw its belly in this direction. Then we draw the thigh, the knee, followed by the shank, which was fuller, and then the ankle. No need to draw the foot, only show the instep exposed with the sole stepping in the water. About the other leg, the knee started from here, but it was blocked. In theory, it was in this shape. Through perspective, we know that it's S-shaped like this, so this foot was here. We draw some traces of water to show that it had just stepped into the water. Dinocaris was aquatic, and we can show this feature. Draw its full thigh, the upper part of which was covered with feathers. There were feathers on the tail and we can draw the tail feathers like those of an ostrich. Its basic outline is complete now. Next, let's add some details. We draw its feathers with strokes like this to show the layers. There were several layers of covered feathers on the wings. And we draw them layer by layer. From the inside, its arm was shaped like this. And there might be only one layer of feathers, so we draw it like this. Here. We draw some shadings to show its layers. The lower part of this animal had bare skin on its belly. We can show the texture of its skin using structural lines to show the wrinkles. The same goes for the legs. Draw the muscles on the shank and the wrinkles at the ankle.
Then about the feathers, we refine them and show their layers. On its neck, we draw a clear dividing line between the feathers on the neck and the feathers on the torso. Slightly draw the feathers on the back sail, basically showing that it was an animal with feathers on its back. We can use these short lines, and randomly draw them in one direction. On the tail feathers, like the low and side ones, we draw some shading to make it look like there was another layer. Show the layers of the outer tail feathers. Finally, draw some wrinkles around the neck to show that there was bare skin on the neck. Draw some skin textures around the mouth and on the face. On its beak, we can draw these structures. Then we draw the river water around its feet. Good, like this. We've finished drawing the body of Dinocaris.